Hey guys, how's it going? Hey, Kip from HR Utilities. Hello, it's me, Ramit. Welcome back to our second part of the How Computers Work series. Today we're going to be explaining how the BIOS works. Now, I'll hand over to Ramit to explain what the BIOS is. Now, the BIOS on a computer normally is the boot up phase. So when a computer is turned on, the first thing it does is launch the BIOS. And the thing is, the BIOS is in charge of setting the computer up and turning the operating system on. Yeah, I think, well, firstly, BIOS stands for Basic Input and Output uh, System. And what it includes is, well, one, it's part of the motherboard, so it's necessary for it to work. Um, and it needs to boot up vital components. So what it includes is called a POST, and that is a power run self test. So it makes sure every make sure make sure um, everything works correctly and how it's supposed to. Now uh, they're all different types of biases. We've come so far now. We have dual biases. So say if one gets bricked, you can still use the other one. Yeah, and it's bias. Well, the dual bias is more useful in a system which will have redundancy, so servers are, yeah. it's quite common. But it's, if you do have it in a computer, then that computer better be holding a lot of important files, otherwise a dual BIOS will just waste space. Yeah, I mean on the motherboard itself, it is really not necessary, unless you do a lot of hacking or flashing. So in that case, yes, it would be useful. Yeah, so I just quickly explained the actual boot up process. Ramit mentioned it briefly, but what it actually does is it checks the CMOS battery for the date, time, etc. Then it loads the drivers for all of it. Now this may seem weird because the drivers are usually installed on the OS itself, but these are hardware specific drivers. Is these are needed for the device to be recognized by the motherboard itself. Then it starts the power up, it's, then it does the post, then it displays all the system information, so that's the white text on the background, and then it checks what devices are bootable, so say you have a USB hard drive, checks yeah. if that USB is uh, yeah. bootable, and then it actually initiates the bootstrap process, so boots up the OS. Yeah, now obviously there are Obviously, you can have multiple partitions on a hard drive to boot up from. So, for example, with my laptop, I've got two operating systems, one which is dedicated to recording, the other one which is dedicated to doing just random stuff. Yeah. So, it's just like, it's what, need, it's what needed to get the computer to function properly, I guess. Because um, without the BIOS, there's no way to actually boot up the OS itself. So, yeah. you, it may seem like, sorry, it may seem like you're just booting straight into Windows because, you know, your Dell sign goes fast, but what's actually happening in the background is, is pretty crucial to get everything working as you expect. Yeah, now, a damaged BIOS yeah. can cause a large number of errors, mm. and obviously the most, the most fatal one of these would be when the BIOS can't launch up an operating system. Because when this happens, you may as well just not use the computer. Yeah, you see, the problem... Now, this is why dual BIOS was invented, because if you do end up, you know, breaking the BIOS, so you can't even launch it, you are pretty much done for. There's... you have to go and buy a new motherboard itself. Yeah. Because... or you, you'll have to get a spare motherboard and flash the CMOS again. Onto from from your current motherboard, it, it's a long and tedious process, and I think I, I see where the motherboard manufacturers are coming from with the dual UEFI BIOS, but as Ram said, it's kind of a waste of space, and you know it makes the motherboard more expensive. Yeah, that and if it's especially useless on a laptop, mm. because it's just that's just like a little place where you could put I don't know two more. RAM slots or something. I think if you if you do want to end up flashing your this is the problem here because 
you know, only certain motherboards can be flashed. And if you try and do a workaround, you're going to break it. So that, that, I think this is why we need to explain how the BIOS works. Because, say, like, Amer American megatrends who make biases, right? They, there's some things that you may not know about the BIOS. So I think that's key what we have to explain yeah. here. And also you need to be careful because there are some companies which use their own custom BIOS. Yeah. This is good and bad. It's good because it means the BIOS is less likely to be more expensive, so it'll just be cheaper. But it's bad because the BIOS can have settings which you don't want. Yeah. So for example, HP have a part in their BIOS which shuts down the computer completely, so it literally just cuts power if it gets, a, if it gets too hot. It doesn't give you a warning, doesn't say anything, just shuts it down for you. Yeah. I mean, in some cases it's good and bad, but, you know, reiterating your point, but uh, the problem with, like, you know, everyday users trying to use a BIOS is because it's kind of hard to use, you know? And I think what we've got to talk about is what the BIOS offers. Because we, we need to talk about how, what it actually utilises, what you can do with it, and how, what the power with it is. Yeah, and that's also quite important on a server. Yeah. Because you don't want the BIOS chip turning things on on a server that you don't want. Because if, for example, you've edited, well, you've got a desktop PC, converted it into a server, you may not want it to waste power on things like a GPU. Alright, sorry guys, um, we been interrupted for about five minutes so again yeah <laughs> again so um we're just going to start a completely new topic sorry about that um so i'm going to talk about the actual boot up process because i, I covered it in a little bit of detail but i'm going to go into more debt now um <laughs> what debt you said debt not debt debt okay happy yeah um so anyway <laughs> i'm going to talk about the booting okay so there's two types of boots there's a cold boot and a reboot. Now, a cold boot is a boot where the computer hasn't been turned on for, I think, it's about five to six hours. But a reboot is just basically turning the computer off and turning it back on again, as probably most of you know. Now, if it's a reboot, uh, the BIOS will skip the post. But if it's a cold boot, it does a read and write test on the RAM and it checks uh, for a keyboard and mouse. So it looks for PCI um, components and checks the graphics cards, and if it does find anything during post, um, it won't let the computer boot. Yeah, it will just say, it won't, it, does it give you an error? It does give you an error. Good, yeah. okay. So it'll just say, uh, this component is broken, please remove it, replace it, or do something to, oh, I don't know, fix it. Yeah. Especially if it's a graphics card. If it's a graphics card that is broken, and it's the non-integrated one, just remove it, if it's the integrated one. I advise that you get a new motherboard. Well, no, CPU, because integrated graphics. That, that's a completely different video, Actually, which we'll record yeah. in a minute. Um, so, I think the last thing we'll talk about is, um, well, you can talk about it. It's the um, actual, you know, booting of the computer. Yeah. No, no, sorry. The configuring of the computer. Ah, configuring of... Configuring the BIOS. Yeah. Now, this is really important, especially if you're running a server of some sort or another. Mm -hmm. Or at least, you don't want certain components to activate. For example, yeah. you want your fans to be always on. <laughs> yeah, that's getting off topic, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, go start and talk about it. Yeah. So, firstly, you can configure your, sys your time and date for the system. This would be very important to most people because it actually allows you it actually allows you to say to the actual component, uh, this is the time right now, this is the date right now, please remember this effectively. Because if you don't have that, then the operating system's not going to have much to go on for time and date, and it will probably have to connect to the internet to find out what time or date it is. Yeah. There's also other things the bias can do, so like... The sequence. Yeah, the boot operation, uh, plug and play. Oh, yes. 
So if you don't want to install drivers, you can enable that. Yeah, uh, but obviously these these things will work at lower efficiency. Yeah. Especially uh, if it's something like a mouse. Mother in, uh, mouse and keyboard, enable numlock, auto detect mouse, enable keyboard, enable the USB ports, mm. um, drive configuration, um, you know, you can uh, prevent things from booting from these drives. Memory, show how fast the memory is running, do a memory test. Yeah, that is actually quite important, especially if you think you've got damaged RAM. Yeah, and I had a bad stick of RAM once, so uh. fun story. Um, then mem uh, the security, you can set a password so nobody can mess about with your BIOS. Power management, yep. checks, you know, how long, yep. how long you can sleep for and things like that. And exit, yeah. you know, just yeah. get out. Now, with security, I advise that you turn that on. Firstly, I don't have it enabled, but... Nah. I probably have it disabled right now. I remember disabling it a while ago because I just got annoyed. Hmm. But I think that's it. If you guys have any questions, please let us know, because we want to you know, talk about this a bit more. But uh, I hope you enjoy the video. If you're feeling awesome, like the video, subscribe to this channel. But other than that, like us on Facebook, follow us to end. Catch you later. Peace. Goodbye.